XLOOKUP is an amazing function in Excel, but it has one feature that can get us in trouble if used improperly. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what that feature is, along with some best practices and habits that you can adopt to stay out of trouble. So let's get to it. So to explain this common mistake with XLOOKUP, we're gonna go ahead and write an XLOOKUP formula. And I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can download it. So in this example here, we have some ticker symbols in this portfolio table, and we wanna look those up in this data over here and return the price. So we're gonna use XLOOKUP for this, and we'll just start typing equals XLOOKUP, we'll tab into that. This is going to be our lookup value, comma, We'll go over here and select this cell, control shift down arrow to select all the way to the bottom, hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference, comma, return array will be the price, again, control shift down arrow, F4, to make that an absolute reference, comma, if not found, we'll just return a blank, so two quotation marks here will return a blank. We don't need the other two arguments, so we'll go ahead and hit enter, and that will return the price, and then I'll uh, select here, double click the fill handle to copy that down. Now I went through writing that formula pretty quickly there. If you're not familiar with some of the techniques I used, I do have a separate video on shortcuts for writing X lookups, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So now that we've copied the formula down, you can see that we have some blank cells here. And I know that not all of these ticker symbols exist in this table over here, so that might be one reason why we have some blanks. However, there could be some other reasons for that. And one very common mistake I see with XLOOKUP when you're writing XLOOKUP is that you just specify this if not found argument without doing any research or investigation on what could be causing the error. Because essentially this if not found argument handles any errors. So if there's a mismatch or XLOOKUP can't find the value, it's just gonna return whatever we specify here in the if not found argument. And I see a lot of Excel users get in the habit of just specifying if not found without doing that investigation. So one great habit you could get into to start here is to not specify it first. Unless you're very good at then going and taking the extra time to look at these blank cells and doing the investigation, what I like to do is just not specify this first. It's not a required argument, it's an optional argument. We can tell that because that's a square brackets around it. So we can just leave it out. Again, I'll hit enter, double click the fill handle to copy this down, and now I get some errors here. And these just stand out more to me and force me to do some investigation. So now let's do some of this investigation. And one of the first steps I like to do here is I'll just take this value, I'm gonna hit Control C on the keyboard to copy it, and I'm gonna hit Control F to open the find uh, window. And I'm just gonna paste the value right in there. And I'm gonna go over here and select column I that contains all my tickers and hit find next. And as you can see, the value's here. Now the issue is that we have this asterisk at the end of it. So there's, it's a mismatch. XLOOKUP's not finding this because XLOOKUP is looking for an exact match and the value that we're looking up doesn't have that asterisk or really space and then asterisk at the end of it. We can also see within our data here that we also have uh, some with tickers with a space and a dash at the end. So there's some things here that we need to clean up to make our XLOOKUP work, at least in more of these scenarios. I just want to take a quick pause and say, if you're new to our channel, welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and our goal here at Excel Campus is to help you elevate your Excel skills so you can save time with your job and advance in your career. We have a free weekly pro tips newsletter that will help you do just that. I'll put a link to it in the description below where you can join us. As I scrolled up there, I also uh, caught my eye that I, we have Netflix right here and Netflix right here. And there's a mismatch for some reason because we're returning an error. If we double click into this cell, we can see we have a space at the end. And if we look at this cell here, we don't have a space. So therefore, this is also a mismatch. So one thing we wanna do here to clean this up is really in this scenario, we kinda of have a pattern here. And that is that we don't wanna have any spaces at the end of these tickers or any other characters after that space. And we can use the text before function to clean this up. There's several ways to do this in Excel, but we're gonna use the new text before function. And with text before, the text we wanna evaluate will be the ticker symbol here. The delimiter is gonna be a space. So within quotation marks here, I'm just going to 
uh, type a space in quotation marks. And then if we were to just uh, hit enter now, this is going to return an error because it didn't find a space in this specific scenario. Uh, so in order to get around that, text before also has an if not found argument, and we can use that in this case here. So I'm just gonna uh, type comma three times, I'm sorry, four times there for if not found, the if not found argument, we'll just select our ticker symbol again. So if it doesn't find the delimiter, which in this case is a space, it'll just return the ticker. So now everything looks good there. Double click the fill handle to copy that down. And as you can see, if we go down here, for PG, we no longer have the space dash. Same with this one here, no longer the space and asterisk. And for this, we can now take our XLOOKUP and point it to this column. Or what typically I like to do is just select this entire column, hit Control C, and then uh, hit Control Shift V to paste values over this existing column with our new cleaned up data. And of course, depending on your data, there might be multiple steps you need to do here to do this investigation work and clean it up. As you can see, if we kind of scroll over here through our portfolio, we still have this one error. So we might just want to kind of gut check this. Again, Control C, Control F, Control V to paste it in here. We'll go over here to column I, do a find next. Couldn't find anything there, so it doesn't look like there are any matches uh, within this data there. And so we can go ahead and say close. And one other thing, quick thing to check here is in your options, you can uh, make sure match entire cell contents is unchecked. Therefore, if there's a space at the beginning or something at the beginning of this, uh, you just wanna make sure that's unchecked there. So uh, find what will look within the text or the contains type search. But since it's not found, we can go ahead and close this down. And now at this point, I will add the air handling to the X lookup. So after we've done the investigation, we can go back here to if not found. And again, we can just put in the uh, two quotation marks to return a blank. Or of course you could put anything in here you want. Maybe we need to research this or look this up. If I can spell, uh, we can put something there as well to uh, return a different value besides the blank. And so I'll go ahead and hit enter there. Again, we'll just copy this down. And now we have a blank for this one that's not found. And one quick side note here and a piece of trivia for you. The XLOOKUP function was actually the first function to ever receive error handling with this if not found argument. Of course, before this, if you remember back, uh, if we were using VLOOKUP or index match or really any other formula, if we wanted to add some error handling, we would need to use the if error function and kind of wrap that around our formula that was returning any errors. So XLOOKUP allows us to not have to wrap the function in if error anymore, which is really nice because it cleans up the formula and allows us to add that error handling inside the function. As I've said in this video, the only issue with this is if you kind of just blindly use it without doing the investigation first, it can cause some issues. But ultimately, I wanna be clear here that I do like this argument. It just needs to be used correctly. And another piece of trivia here for you, when XLOOKUP was initially released in August of 2019, it didn't have the if not found argument. Microsoft added it later on when it was in beta based on some user feedback. And again, it's a great addition to this function. And now we've seen it in other functions like we just saw with text before. And a lot of newer functions are getting this argument to again, help clean up our formulas and just make them easier to read. So hopefully that helps you prevent some errors with your XLOOKUP formulas. I'm curious to know what's been most helpful for you or if you have any other tips for preventing errors with your formulas. Leave a comment below and let us know. And if you're watching this video and wondering why I didn't use Excel tables, well, I was actually wondering the same thing. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I love tables, but I don't always use them. And this next video explains why. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in that next video.